I'm Warren Dean and welcome to the March 2004 edition of the podcast. I am new to you. I'm your brand new spokesperson here at the Edmonton Humane Society and very happy to be part of the crew. We have a great show coming up and of course we're coming to you as always from our beautiful facility down here at Northwestern Edmonton and if you haven't come down please come and visit us. It's a beautiful facility. You're going to be surprised at the beauty of it and the space of ton of room here and of course all our fantastic staff and volunteers down at the Edmonton Humane Society. I do want to say before we get started how proud and happy I am to begin my stay here at EHS uh, and already build on the great legacy that is here at the Edmonton Humane Society. My dog Dexter and I are looking forward to meeting all of you, sharing stories with you and continue, of course continuing to grow our successes here at the EHS. So let's get started with this month's podcast. Coming up in this month's show, we have a fresh look on the roads with some new vehicles and it wouldn't have happened without our wonderful donors. Also, it seems like winter always drags on. How do our moods during these months affect our pets? And we'll share the story of Titan, who went on a bit of an adventure. First off, the Edmonton Humane Society was very happy to welcome student Emily Muddle. Emily came to visit us from the St. Stanislaus School so we could help her out with a school project. Ten-year-old Emily is in grade 5-6 and as part of her Leadership in Action program came to the Edmonton Humane Society to interview Travis Grant from our Communications Department. Emily asked the tough questions and learned a lot about our mission to help homeless and abused companion animals enlightening people and enriching lives. She also learned why donating to the Humane Society, whether it's time, money, or supplies, is a worthwhile cause and provides such a positive outcome for the animals in our care. Emily got to come behind the scenes on her tour of EHS, even naming this cat Brownie, and possibly melting her mom's heart interacting with a couple of adorable puppies. The Muddle family may have some new members in their future. And we here at the Edmonton Humane Society are looking forward to her becoming a lifelong volunteer. Thanks, Emily. Emily is a much better student than I was, and I'm pretty sure she got a great grade on that project. So thanks once again, Emily, and to her mom as well. So at this time of year, we can get that feeling of just winter dragging on a little bit. It gets a little long by the time we get into March. And our moods do get affected, but how do our moods affect our pets or how do our pets get affected by the winter blues or even seasonal affective disorder? We took the opportunity to ask that question to Belinda Wagner. Belinda is uh, one of our behavior consultants and our uh, manager of the uh, Canine Enrichment Center and Training Academy. There is some evidence out there that animals are affected by SAD in that it does affect the chemical imbalances in our body, so the melatonin and the serotonin. And what will happen is your dogs or cats will seem more aloof, not like going out. The other side of the coin is, is it because you're acting that way as well? I mean, history is that we designed this family day holiday so that we would have a bit of a break in between New Year's Day and Good Friday because they found that people were getting really, really depressed. So there, there are lots of reasons out there as to why animals look depressed during the winter months. If things are different in the household, then what might happen is your dog's behavior might change. So first thing you need to do is make sure that you're doing their regular routine. Are they getting the same amount of physical exercise, mental stimulation? Have things changed in the household? Has someone left home? Have you gotten new furniture? Cats react really strange to even the most minor changes. And the big thing is if your behavior has changed drastically, first thing we always do is check medical. So check their serotonin levels, make sure that they are approximate because the dog food you have may not have enough to help them get those happy levels in their brain. And then try to figure out with your vet and your behavior consultant what your dog is actually suffering from before you determine it's sad. Absolutely a pet's going to feed off, off the other because although we talk about 
pack, we don't talk about it like a wolf pack, they're a group of dogs that live together. So I have several dogs that live together and I know the minute one dog is off, the rest of them will be off, just like your family. Or when you go to work and a coworker is having a bad day, it can set off the whole workplace. So you just have to really try to be an investigator and figure out what's going on in the household and help the animal you believe needs it first. I think the most important thing is, if you feel like you're in a slump and your dog's in a slump, get into a class. Even if you've taken a thousand classes before, I still take classes with my dogs because it's winter and you get in with a bunch of people who have good energy and just get your dog refocused and rebonded with you so that you can enjoy the rest of this winter together. The Edmonton Humane Society is very happy to have two brand new Ford Explorers for our animal protection officers to hit the road in and get out in the community and help out the animals here in, in Edmonton and surrounding areas. And this wouldn't have happened without our great donors. So we wanted to see those vehicles in action. Let's take a look. In early 2013, the EHS asked you for help to equip our animal protection officers with new and more efficient vehicles. Thanks to the generosity of our donors, we were able to raise over $118,000. And with that, we were able to purchase two brand new Ford Explorers. The vehicles were purchased through Waterloo Ford, who have been very supportive on other EHS initiatives, including our window sticker partnership to raise awareness of the dangers of leaving pets unattended in vehicles. I decided to go on a cold day ride along with officers Taylor and Gray to show you the new animal protection vehicles being used while going over some of the things to protect our pets during temperature extremes. Sometimes it's really difficult because in these temperatures people tend to panic a little bit because it's so cold and so sometimes people will get a little frustrated with us on the phone because we're trying to ask a lot of questions to prioritize our files. and. To the callers, every call that comes in is urgent. To, to them, it's urgent. And what we have to do, because we have limited resources and there's so many calls, is we have to ask a lot of questions to find out which ones are actually top priority and which ones can maybe wait an hour or two before we get to. Um, so that's you know something that we like people to know is that we are going to ask questions to try and qualify which files we have to get to first. Please say a command. Officers always follow a protocol when they are arriving at a call for everyone's safety. At this point of the day, it was minus 14, with the wind chill minus 19. Making sure animals that are outdoors all day have the right shelter is a big concern. So we're going past the front first, which is something we normally would do for safety, is we like to circle the address. Um, being that we're just out by ourselves, um, sometimes we don't know prior history of the address or the individuals that are there or even the animals that are there, so it can be a big safety concern for us. Um, so we're just going past the front to see if anybody's home, any animals loose, anything that would be any concern for for our officers and our safety. Well, and this one here isn't really actually a call that we've gotten. This is one that we're following up on ourselves because we know that there's ongoing complaints coming in here. So we're just, to be honest, wanting to check on this dog, make sure it's okay. Sometimes owners do everything right to provide shelters, but a pet just refuses to use it, making it look to others in the neighborhood that the animal isn't properly provided for. On this particular visit, the owner had a great shelter set up for their pet, ensuring it was warm and protected from the elements. Just took a quick look there, just did a follow up with that dog, and the dog's obviously using the shelter, which is good to see, and she or he came out nice and warm and cozy and happy, not showing any signs of distress. That's what we're checking for, especially when it's this cold. So if we're seeing any shivering or shaking or lifting paws, um, lethargic behavior, anything out of the norm, animal doesn't appear to be healthy, and that dog was happy, healthy, and nice and warm inside her shelter there, so uh, certainly don't have any concerns. We'll be closing up our file. As the officers explained, there are a number of factors that come into play when dealing with really hot or really cold conditions for your pets. It depends on the animal, to be honest. With dog in car season, you know, our animals in vehicle, we kind of have like a rule of thumb about minus 15 to plus 15 is usually a safe zone, but it really depends as well because um, let's say you have a, an extremely healthy animal that's outside and he's got a big thick fur coat and he's got a little bit of winter weight on him. You know, he might be okay in minus 15 to minus 20 with a, a wooden doghouse with some straw in, but that same shelter for an older dog or a shorter haired dog or an animal that's not in 100% health may not be adequate at all. So that's where it really comes down to asking questions and, 
and really asking the owners really take a good look at what they're providing for their specific animal to make sure it's adequate. Um, the law basically states adequate and that's where it comes up to, to us to provide that information to the owners as to if it's determined to be adequate or not to stop the animal from being in distress. It doesn't matter what the temperature is, if you're not home or if you're not able to monitor your animal, they have to have access to a shelter and that has to be adequate depending on the temperature so it varies. It's equally as big of a concern for us in the summer. They have to be able to get out of the sun and get into some shade and cool their bodies down. So it's just as important when it's right now minus 14 as when it's plus 14 for them to have access to a shelter. That's just a small taste of what our animal protection officers do on a daily basis. Thanks to our wonderful donors, it has become much better being out in the community with these two new vehicles. So Officer Taylor, Officer Gray, and Officer James wanted to personally thank you from a much cozier and cuter environment. We just wanted to take a minute to thank all of the donors that contributed to our new campaign to get us our vehicles. Uh, we finally have both of them, they're deckled and they're up and going and it's making such a difference in our day to day job. It's been really exciting having the new vehicles. It's definitely uh, great to be out in the community with vehicles that look professional and that are helping us do our job on a daily basis, especially in these cold temperatures. They warm up really well, helps us to save a lot more animals. Yes, they're much more efficient when we're going down our different back alleys, doing our different investigations, things like that. Um, they're much more efficient, much more easier to get out to different addresses and things like that so we can do our job in a timely manner. And safer. That's a big part of the new vehicles for us, the safety for ourselves and for the animals that we're transporting on the winter roads. The, they're so hard to drive in, in our old vehicles, the big old clunkers, and now we've actually got 4x4 four four capacity and we can get out to some of our more rural addresses and down the back alleys much more safely. Stay with us after this short break. We're going to take a look at Titan and his bit of a small adventure with the EHS. Edmonton Humane Society. There's a pet for everyone. I like working at the Edmonton Humane Society because every day is different. Uh, you don't know what types of animals are going to come in the door. It's a really good thing to get uh, a lot of hands-on experience with these animals and right away if they come in the door and they need our help we can we can go right into doing that. It's very interesting and it's very exciting and um, knowing at the end of the day when I go home that I have helped one or two or three animals it's a wonderful feeling. I like working at the Edmonton Humane Society because I have fabulous co-workers and I like seeing all the families that are completed every day. When the families come in and they start viewing all the animals and then they find one that they fall in love with and they, we get to see them through the entire process from the moment they come into the building to the moment they go home and that's my favorite part of my job. I really enjoy working here because you get to work with a variety of different dogs and it's something I've always wanted to do. Nothing is more rewarding than getting to see a dog that comes in very fearful, work with it, have it make progress and go out onto the adoption floor and find its new home. There's a lot of support here at the shelter uh, such as compassion fatigue training. Additionally, the staff themselves are all very supportive whenever you're having a rough day. There's someone always there for you. What a good boy. He's a good boy. I like working with the Edmonton Humane Society because I get to help uh, people with their companion animals. You really get to know the dogs in the daycare, you get to know their personalities, um, you get to help the ones that need to be, you know, a little bit more outgoing. Sometimes they come in a little bit on the shy side and they kind of, you see them blossom into this really friendly social dog. We have some really great clients. They appreciate everything we do for them and, and, and it's great. So one of my favorite movies as a kid was Disney's The Incredible Journey. I often wondered what those animals actually saw and what they'd actually say if they ever could talk and talk about that specific adventure. 
That brings us to Titan, who had a bit of his own incredible journey. Titan was a transfer in from the Thornhills um, bylaw services. Um, he was picked up uh, by them and then transferred to us to take him from there. Titan apparently had places to go and he decided to start his adventure. He was uh, on a stray hold with us, um, so we had actually slated him to um, have his surgery, uh, his neuter done uh, that week. Um, he was out enjoying himself in playgroup on the uh, 17th um, and decided that he could clear the fence. Uh, so he escaped from our playgroup area um, and took a run in. <laughs> it wasn't too long after he went out on his own that Titan was reconnected with the Edmonton Humane Society. On the Sunday, um, just this past Sunday, we had uh, a volunteer uh, spot him on a Facebook page for another animal shelter, uh, the Parkland County Animal Shelter. Um, so we got in touch with them to let them know that we thought that this might be the same dog that we had uh, had escaped from us. Um, and it turns out that uh, Sir Titan was indeed the same dog. Uh, he still had our neck band on with our, his ID number and everything on him. So we knew it was a, a match. Uh, so we arranged for him to be um, transferred back to us. And now our Titan is looking for a new forever home and a brand new family. He's ready to go and up for adoption. Yes, we're, uh, we're just waiting for his, uh, where he just had the surgery today. So we'll just wait for his uh, clearance from medical and then he'll be ready to be adopted. He's been microchipped, vaccinated and uh, had his surgery. He's got uh, a, a gorgeous uh, uh, temperament and he's a beautiful dog. He does need a little bit of grooming at the moment, but uh, other than that, he's, he's a beautiful dog. <laughs> Come and fall in love with Titan, just like we did down here at the Edmonton Humane Society. Maybe he's the newest member of your family. We have a great team of veterinarians here at the Edmonton Humane Society, and they had a brand new experience with a pig whose name is Petunia. Here's my conversation with Dr. Lang about the learning experience they had. With Dr. Lang and a new experience here, you guys did some learning, always learning here That's at the right. EHS. Uh, something uh, different, we have a uh, pig, which is Petunia, uh, came to us a while ago. Just talk a little bit about her uh, first and uh, the age and her situation. Well, Petunia came to us as uh, just as a, as a little pot-bellied pig that uh, needed a new home. Uh, she's a girl, obviously, mm -hmm. and she was a little hard to tell exactly how old, but we figured she was a not really quite an adult, but not really a little piglet anymore. So we had her pegged somewhere around the four or six months, something like that. And, and quite large for uh, four or six months compared to a dog or a cat. They, they grow quite quickly. They grow certainly very quickly. I mean, she's not that tall, but uh, she certainly put on a lot of weight even right. in a couple weeks that we had her had her here. And what we needed to do was uh, your learning part was uh, we had to spay Petunia. That's right. Uh, there's quite a bit of a problem with the, the pot pellied pigs as far as people getting them, not really thinking about what they're getting into and, uh, and the fact that they grow so much. Mm -hmm. And there's quite a lot of breeders out there passing them off and, uh, and, and getting them into homes that don't necessarily know where they're going. And we, we end up with pigs that uh, we don't want to have contributing to that problem. Right. So we decided to go ahead and get her spayed. And this was a learning process uh, for yourself and others. Uh, we had to uh, get a specialist in for this one because this was new for us. Yeah, not exactly a specialist so much right. as somebody that's experienced, experienced enough <laughs> to, and knows and has done some, some pig spays. So that's not something that we, we do here. We don't see pigs that often. Uh, and in the past, we really hadn't gone to the spay or neuter on them pretty much because we weren't all that comfortable in the surgery. So uh, describe it a little bit uh, compared from your viewpoint. You sat back, you watched a lot and, and took it all in. Uh, how much different was it for you? Well, I mean, the actual procedure is fairly similar. You're still removing the, the uterus and you're removing the ovaries, which is exactly the same as you'd be doing in, in a dog or a cat spay. The approach was really probably the most uh, different uh, because just the way the anatomy is, it's a lot easier to do a pig spay through the flank. Uh, so on the side of the body instead of right on the, on the midline. Uh, you can do dog and cat spays that way as well, but it's generally speaking easier to do it on, on the belly. But on the pigs, especially when they don't have a lot of clearance from the ground, right. you know, they're more likely to, to be 
be dragging dragging that incision into places that you don't want it to go uh, because they don't have much space there. So it's better to do it on the flank. Yeah, Petunia looks great. She's recovering nicely now. Very and, quickly. And uh, yeah, she bounced uh, back very fast. Oh yeah, she was out running around uh, within a few hours after after the, the surgery. Not quite as forcefully pulling on us when we're <laughs> walking down the hallways, but that's about it. And that's one of the things that uh, changes uh, with uh, cats and dogs. The behavior changes a little bit. That's one of the reasons we do uh, do spaying uh, to kind of help that. So you've noticed that in Petunia as well. Well, that was more just effect of the anesthetic and such. I don't think it's going to make a big difference okay. in her in her uh, actual uh, outgoingness or anything else like that in the short term. Uh, generally speaking, though, they have seen though in pigs, if they get spayed or neutered, that they are less likely to become aggressive as they get older, because that is something that is quite a, a common problem when you're trying to keep them as a pet. It's not usually something they worry about too much when they're out in the barn running around, because right. uh, they're not having that same interaction. But when they're trying to be a pet, it certainly has a tendency to be, as they get big and mature, mm -hmm. they get a little pushier and can be, actually become quite aggressive. So there you go. If you're going to have a pet like this, you definitely want to treat it like every other pet in the home, a cat or a dog, and yeah. make sure you take care of everything right away. That's right. Dr. Lang, thank you very much. Don't go away. Uh, coming up after this short break, we're going to head into Bingo's, our shelter store. And of course, when you shop there, you help out all the animals here at the Edmonton Humane Society. The Edmonton Humane Society. There's a pet for everyone. Real men love power tools. Real men love trucks. Real men love cats. Cats can bring even the most masculine guy some tenderness. The Edmonton Humane Society. There's a pet for everyone. As usual, here in Bingo's as part of our podcast, Nadine's with me. And uh, Nadine, we got lots of toys and lots of things to go over today. Uh, let's yeah. start with these small stuff and work our way up. Absolutely. And of course, we're, you know, you're getting to the end of uh, winter. Yes. Spring's right around the corner. Absolutely. So we want to get our animals prepared for that as well. Uh, let's talk about some of the uh, items we have for our smaller pets. Yes, we definitely hardly think about those guys, but they do get a little antsy this time of year as well. So I got this really cute little box here that comes with some fluff and your little rodent can go in there and have a good old time ripping it all up and having some fun for themselves. And remember, that's for these small pets, uh, even though dogs would love that one too, oh, I'm sure. It would last a second with a dog. <laughs> yes, yes. And now for the rabbits and guinea pigs, we have this brand new product from Living World. It's a tunnel that the rabbits can chew on. It's also got healthy marigold stuck to the outside, so it's very good for them, as well as a fun product for them to hide and chew on. So it can go inside of it, as well as uh, just gnaw on it a little bit yep, as well. Absolutely. That's a great item. Yep. Like that. Uh, okay, now uh, to get the uh, cats going and kind of keep them a little bit sharper, plus reward them a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Uh, we get lots of people complaining how their cats just don't seem to have enough to do during the day when uh, they're not home. So uh, Sansas came up with this product that uh, you can put the food in here, and I also recommend putting some treats in there too so they get a little bit of both. And they have to knock it down, knock it around, and try to get it out all the way to the bottom so where they can actually eat it. 
Wow, so yeah. it's a little, little bit of a maze, a little bit of a game for absolutely, them. Absolutely, because cats like to dig and get yeah. their food out. Absolutely, a great product right there. Yeah, absolutely. And something that's uh, also educational and uh, rewarding for our dogs as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great training device because um, lots of people complain about their dogs going crazy when someone dings the doorbell. Mm -hmm. Well, this would definitely be the answer to all that. It dispenses treats by the owner's remote. So it, you can do that. So if someone comes to ding the doorbell, you can dispense treats, the dogs will run to it and ignore the doorbell. And we also, it comes with uh, a DVD and this target stick to, so they know if they hit that, a treat will come out. So you can put this in one room. Yes. You can put the dispenser in another room. Absolutely. And uh, what you want your dogs to do is hit this part. Yep. That's their duty. Yeah, exactly. And then the treat comes out there. Yes. A very cool item, especially for uh, those dogs that are a little bit maybe uh, more energetic. Absolutely. Yeah. These are great products, uh, Nadine, and uh, of course, uh, people can come on down. You've got all the products here. They can ask any questions Absolutely. that they have as well, and you're going to help them out. Absolutely. Being our expert. It's my job. That's your job. And uh, of course, uh, we want to remind folks as well, uh, everything sold here in Bingo's? Everything goes back into the shelter operations. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thanks. Before we wrap up this edition of the podcast, we just grabbed a couple of animal-related tidbits for you. It's kind of newsworthy. So how about this, coffee in a cafe with some cats. Cat cafes, very popular in Tokyo where people are charged a per hour fee to hang out with cats while they have their coffee, read a book, or just hang out with their friends. Now while the market hasn't taken off in North America, there are a few places popping up. San Francisco, Oakland, Montreal, and Vancouver have all recently had spots open up something different to go with your coffee. Also, the most searched dog in 2013 was the Bulldog, this based on Google data. Chow Chow and Mastiff were in the top five. German Shepherds, Golden Retrievers, Rottweilers, Border Collies, Great Danes, and Australian Shepherds were in the top 20. What does this say? Well, with bigger dogs being more popular in searches, experts say it shows a sign of economic optimism. So when the recession hits, smaller dogs were the one to be adopted because the costs to look after them were less. No matter recession or not, big or small, that dog is going to love you if you adopt it from the EHS. Auto Details is proud to support the Edmonton Humane Society and all of the help that they give to our future best friends. They will help you adopt a spayed or neutered cat, dog, rabbit, or other companion animal. And they also offer a large selection of services for pet owners. All of the info you'll need can be found at edmontonhumanesociety.com or by visiting the shelter in person, the Edmonton Humane Society. They help you adopt a pet. They help you with your pet. That does it for this month's edition of the podcast. Thanks for watching. And just a reminder for you folks, to think of us and our shelter animals and donate however you can. Being a nonprofit charitable organization, we do greatly depend on donor support to care for about 13,000 homeless animals each year. Please visit our website and how you can donate. Thanks to all of you who already do support us. Also, thanks so much to Catch Can Systems for sponsoring this show. That company is committed to sustainable development by protecting and preserving the land and water. Thanks to Evan Adams for his technical directing time and labor to bring this show to you. And for Shaw TV for airing our show at no cost. We are the only news magazine show produced by and for an animal shelter. See you next time and make sure to check us out on the web, on Twitter, or on Facebook.